Oh, man. We began preparing for turkey season this week. Plus, I want to share with you the results of our recent soil test. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Muddy Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Redneck Hunting Blind, Dead Downwind, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Scent Master, Flood Sport Arrows, Prime Bows by G5, and Outdoor Edge Knives. Turkey season is one of my favorite times of year, but not just going out hunting, I like everything involved with preparing for turkey season. My techniques haven't changed in a number of years, but there may be a game changer this year. I had a chance to turkey hunt with the boys from Winchester last spring. They dropped some hints and actually let me try a couple rounds of a prototype load they were working on. I was really impressed with what I saw. Well, that round is what's now known as Longbeard XR, and it's available to all of us. I'm gonna give it a try today, and I'm gonna compare it head to head with my old standard, double X's. Ooh, that's one dead turkey. Easy to see while I've killed a bunch of birds with the double X over the years. Let's see what the Longbeard does. Oh, man. Woo, what a difference. I admit, I don't accept change real easily, but after the first shot, that makes me want to change. My gosh. That decapitated that bird. Look at that solid line across there. Too many to count. Way too many to count. And that's number fives. The lone sixes with just my standard choke. I mean, it's in the fancy turkey gun. This is kind of my multi-purpose gun. That's, a, <coughs> that's amazing. Let's back up to 40 and see what happens. You know what? We're trying to, we're trying double X's and lone beards at 40, but I'm gonna bet after 40, we don't even worry about double X's anymore. We just stick at lone beard. Now we're start with double X at 40 yards this time. Couple in the spine, probably a dead turkey, certainly a blind turkey, but uh, nothing I'm real excited about. Put a long beard in there. See if it brings a long beard home. Oh man, I can see that difference from here. 10 pellets just in the spine, not counting everything else right here in the vital zone, 40 yards. Turkey's obviously dead and no flopping. In the past, I've limited shots at turkeys to 40 yards with my shotgun. I didn't want to risk crippling a tom, but the results we're seeing with the new Longbeard XR, we've backed up to 50, see how it patterns. Ooh, that looks good. One, two, three, four, five, and then in spine, one, two, three, four. Plenty of pellets in here. Bird's clearly down. I aimed right here. Got many more pellets down here. So at 50 yards, I'm gonna pull up the center head. 40 and blow, right here. Dead Tom. Do we dare go all the way out to 60? Let's give it a try. Oh my gosh. I can see that from here. Center head helped a lot. We may have to back to 70 yards. That was amazing. At 60 yards, pellets in the brain, pellets all down the spine. Great pattern, dead turkey. This has been a lot of fun. We're gonna back up to 70 yards just to see if it'll throw a pattern at that distance. Turn to hope. Dead turkey. This is a great illustration of how advanced Winchester Lone Beard XR is. 
70 yards with a range finder, two, three, four, five in the spine, one in the brain, 40 yards with double X, which was a great load, one, two in the spine, none in the brain. You're adding a lot of distance with your shotgun simply by changing the shell that cost about the same. Winchester, Lone Beard XR. I am not saying or encouraging you to shoot a turkey at 70 yards. We're having so much fun, I want to check out the gear and just see what this new ammo would do. I think it's important to note I've got an off-the-shelf shotgun and not some super tight, high-powered turkey choke. I was stunned at how tight these patterns were. I want to share with you my pattern at 20 yards. Notice the bulk of the shot can be covered by my fist. And actually, my point of aim was slightly off, missing the turkey's neck. Now there's plenty of pellets to take this tom down to put my tag on there, but with a pattern this tight, it's real important to have a good scope on your shotgun or sighting device where you can hold your aim perfectly. With these results, I'm already planning on putting my decoys out just a little further, trying to get the tom in 30 or 40 yards instead of 20, making a clean shot with a bigger pattern, and that gives me the advantage of getting away with just a little bit more, not being quite so tight, and taking time to enjoy the turkey. I've been using a product called Antler Dirt, which is composted and humified poultry litter with a lot of minerals and other stuff added to it on my food plots for years. And every year I collect soil samples and I've been following improvement from year to year in each plot. This year I was amazed in that most plots have reached such a high level of soil fertility, I don't have to add any antler dirt. It even smells like gold dirt. Antler dirt naturally neutralizes the soil, so I've never had to add lime. But as I go through my soil samples this year, plot after plot after plot after plot after plot don't require any additions this year. That's a huge value, not only in saving me money, but also ensuring that the deer have maximum quality forage and abundant forage to eat year round. It's interesting to compare the results from food plots that are very close together. We're gonna look at lower four and one we call Cedar Grove. Cedar Grove is brand new. You saw AJ and Adam laying out some new hidey hole or hunting plots a few weeks ago. Lower four has been a food plot for several years. Look at the phosphorus and potassium levels in lower four versus Cedar Grove. And you can clearly tell which one's had a few years of antler dirt and which one hasn't had anything. This year, I won't need to apply any antler dirt to lower four, but Cedar Grove's gonna get a good dose. If you've watched Growing Deer for any length of time, you know we have great success with deer and turkey coming to our food plots. Better tasting forage is a huge attraction to white-tailed deer and turkey. And the addition of holding more moisture and producing more tonnage, well, that's an added value. Adam and AJ and I went to Oklahoma to work with Daniel, who owns a little bit over 100 acres south of Tulsa. There's no row crops anywhere around Daniel's property. And as a guy that owns roughly 100 acres, he wants to do everything he can to encourage deer to stay on his property. Can you make this property have less coyotes on it than your neighbors? And will Bill sense that? I absolutely think so. And I think that you know, you can build food plots, your neighbors can build food plots. You can put out a corn feeder, your neighbors can put out corn feeders. But most trapping, as you know, is hard work, frustrating work, and a lot of people aren't going to go to that effort to trap. And you can make your area, I'm not going to say predator free, but lower in predators and encourage deer to use your area through that technique. And I feel very solid about that. No doubt about it, there's some hurdles to cross when you're managing a small property. The deer are going to spend time on a neighbor's property. They're going to have an impact on the structure of the local deer herd. It's easy to spook deer off a small property simply by going to your stand. So we spent the day with Daniel walking his property and talking about all the options. That's going to be a food pot. That's clearly a food pot location, a good one. We talked a lot about improving his timber stand, TSI, timber stand improvement. All right, so this trail right down through here. I'm going to take out all these trees here. I'm probably going to save this one and I'm going all around. Boom, boom. 
boom, 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 boom. Here, here, I'm gonna lave that tree. I'm taking all this little stuff out through here, all the way over to that one. That will allow there to be native grass and forbs come back up because sunshine's getting down now. And you convert this to being just a pass through acorn only area to something deer want to use year round. And that will make a huge difference of whether deer spend time on this side of fence or neighbor side, because quite candidly, neighbors probably aren't going to do that. Of all the properties we've toured so far this spring, this may, you, you need this tool. This is going to be a great tool. Okay. Well, Daniel, you picked a great day for us to come out and tour a couple of my quick observations. A lot of deer sign, obviously. Pretty homogenous. They've got some topography, but all the woods are about the same age, been high graded sometime in the past, a lot of saplings and not much food except acorns. So plan basically at you know 30,000 foot view is gonna be, we're gonna do some TSI, timber stand improvement, and the most efficient way here is gonna be hack and squirt like we demonstrated. We're gonna add a lot of acres of food plots on ridge tops. The wind's gonna be more stable. These little 30 to 100 foot deep dips here are gonna cause that wind to swirl. We're gonna make those sanctuaries. It's where the deer wanna be, and we want them to be there coming up to the ridge top to feed, and that's where you're gonna be because you can get in there with a constant wind direction without alerting deer. We were able to leave Daniel with a couple of projects to start on, but our real work is when we return home and spend a lot of time studying the map and even the neighborhood, put together a plan to utilize all of his property for food, cover, water in such a way that he'll be a successful hunter. Maybe turkey season's already open where you hunt, or maybe you're going out this week to pattern your shotgun. Whatever the case is, while you're outside, take a little time to enjoy creation, and more importantly, be quiet and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching GrowingDeer.tv.